Good morning. Hope everybody had a great Christmas weekend here. We're back in the shop today. It's, uh, what's today? Tuesday. Brock's over here. We're going to attempt to get this combine done today. I don't know if we'll get it out of here, but we're going to try and get it done. So he's going to start with cleaning out the cab. Got a little shop vac to do and dusting. And uh, we're going to get the drive chains put back on. We're going to get it greased. And then I think we're going to drag shields outside and wash all of the shields power washer put those back on we'll fold the outside panels on and uh, get our spray foam on so we should should be able to get close today working on <coughs> excuse me working on getting this chain on here for the feeder house and uh, it's got this tensioner here you kind of got to loosen it up get it up in there and then slide that forward to get the right tension on that chain and get it tight okay that one is supposed to ride on that plastic rail uh, it's supposed to lift just on the ends of it a little bit i think we got it close it's going to stretch a lot that's one that's got to get tightened uh, several times throughout the year usually do it after wheat harvest and then try and do it a couple times throughout the fall sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't but there's the old ones they get replaced every year uh just a high wear chain high speed high wear because you're using it all the time the feeder house uh, i've tried running some chains a second year and then they usually break halfway through the next harvest so it's just not worth it just put new chains on so that one's done brock's doing tailings chain over there you got the cabin cleaned out. We gotta wash windows yet, but the outside we'll get with the foam. We could wash the inside windows. Twenty-four. Need two. Uh, yeah, you will need two. To attend a ratcheting open end. They have them. Get that wrench. Why? I feel like that would be a good investment for the farm. This is the only application where it makes any sense. Put it, put it up.
Good. What's this bolt from? That go to one of the. We're gonna take the combine outside. Brock did a decent job on the floor. Uh, we're going to back outside here, clean up the outside shields, and clean the floor up inside. And then we're going to pull all the shields that are right back there behind that door. Power wash those while we got stuff set up and outside. It's really warm today in the 50s, so good to outside power wash and weather. We don't have to worry about doing it inside here. It'd be nice. I'm going to say there's one spot in the combine that we haven't washed yet. Reality is there's a lot more than that. We just don't know where the rest of them are. But the one that I do know of, the top of the outside of the unloading auger extension or folding part, we haven't been able to get to it yet. So we're going to roll the steps out here so we can get up there and get that washed while we're at it. And I unfolded everything. Yeah. Time to shine. Decided to clean the floor up before we all the shields and get everything and we've got all kinds of helpers here my boys and their cousins all home they're all here for christmas so rock squeegee and this thing works pretty good i don't know if it's better or faster than a wand or not but i've got it so i'm using it today helps keep the direction of the flow moving where you want it so the water's getting to the drain at least all right, well, that uh, cleaned the floor up pretty good. I, it may be a little bit faster, but you at least don't have to carry the wand the whole time. It's a little easier to use, and it blows the water where you want it to go. So, yeah, worked good. Um, I'm going to start dragging shields up. So behind this door here, behind door number two, we have a whole pile of shields for the combine. They all need washed, so they all get drug up. And set out rocks gonna wash i'm gonna carry dirty ones out bring clean ones in they'll end up back on a combine by the end of the day rock washing i got two of the boys carrying shields out dirty ones they're doing a great job so i'm trying to bring clean ones in I'm trying to place them where they go on the machine a little bit like this one goes on the feeder house on the left hand side here we've got some for the right hand side over there that one goes on the corn head i'm gonna have to get that one taken back say hi Hot water and uh, whatever environmental condition is makes steam. Warm and humid, I guess. They're about done. Good job, boys.
Okay. We got the shields all done. Bent the whole blade. Bent the whole blade. Don't know what. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna rocks cleaning up all that all loading auger there. I'm gonna get the foam cannon ready to go. We're gonna foam it. Scrub it. I got my Andy Clean dispenser all set up here. Supposed to use it straight in this foamer, so just why it gets so foamy. We're gonna need to drill an air vent at some point. I'll let it I'll let it get drawn down just a touch first. Okay, we're ready for foam. Straight Andy Clean in there. You might have to play with the knob a little bit, like oh I don't know there. <laughs> um. So protocol here, we're gonna foam it. We're gonna get the brooms or the uh, the scrub brush things on poles so that we can reach, or rags or whatever, and scrub everything, wipe it down, and then rinse. And then we're going to use some of the Griot's um, uh, ceramic foam uh, stuff on it to protect it as well. But hit it, Brock. We've been using hot water for the shields and stuff, but I use cold water to apply the foam. Doesn't melt the seals in my, uh, dang that stuff is cool. Doesn't melt the seals in my foam cannon, and uh, I think it helps the foam stick a little better when it's cold foam. You want me to move the ladder? We're going to need to move the ladder anyway. We got these soft car wash brushes that seem to work fairly well. Come around the front, get this corner. We're gonna do one side here, scrub it down, rinse it, and then we'll go to the other side. Scrub nice. Let's see if it looks as good after we get it rinsed down. The better. There was, I mean, it was clean before, right? But there was some spots where you could see there was some dirt stuck on and stuff. But the soap and the scrubbing should solve. Brock is finishing up uh, rinsing down the other side of the combine and some of the stuff up on top that's going to need to get rinsed again. I am getting our Rio's ceramic washing coat ready to go so the Andy clean does a fantastic job of cleaning like I'm not saying that that is a bad product there's a reason I have a two and a half gallon jug over there I like it it foams really good it helps get the dirt and the grime and stuff scrubbed off of it if we hadn't been washing on this and it was still dirty it would melt the dirt off the side panels of the combine it works what it doesn't do 
is provide any paint, you know, protection from the UV light and all of that kind of stuff. Doesn't make the water beat off of it. It doesn't, um, it's a cleaner. It's not a protectant, right? We could wax this combine. Go old school, use some turtle wax. That's what I used to do. It takes forever. I mean, you're going to spend a day or two the way at my, my pace waxing this combine. It's a lot of work. It's a pain in the butt. I went from there to a ceramic coating um, with like a little sponge that you wipe it on, you wipe it off, and, and it worked really well. It's not near as much work as, as a wax, but still takes a lot of effort. Probably a little bit better protection than what I'm doing now, but this stuff is so easy and it works really, really well. So, real ceramic washing coat, we're just gonna dump in a little bit. There's a ratio you're supposed to use. I figured it out for my foam cannon. It's about that much. It's not as foamy as the soap, the Andy Clean soap, or any other soap for that matter. But you spray this stuff on with the foam cannon, and by the time you get around to rinsing it off, the water just beads off. Like, it doesn't, doesn't stick at all, and it's awesome, and so, we're gonna spray the whole dang thing down with this. I take back what I just said about the Andy Clean a little bit. I don't know if it's that or the ceramic stuff we sprayed on it last year, but well, you get it clean and the water does bead right off of it. That's not so bad. We're gonna put that stuff on anyway, but I'm impressed. Foam two. Like I said, not as foamy, doesn't stick. But it sure makes water beat off of it. I feel like it works and it's helping. I said this a while ago that I'd put a link in the description for something else. I didn't do it. I'll try and remember this one. I probably won't do it. It does help me out slightly when you guys click on those links and buy stuff. See what I mean? I mean. That stuff is awesome. All right, I'll let Brock finish rinsing it down and then I mixed up some more for the other side and we'll pull her in. Done washing. Pull her in, let it dry off, put all the shields back on and grease. <clears throat> oh yeah, we got grease. You can close that door. Okay, cool. Huh? Not so bad. I uh, we brought it in. We went to lunch. Let it dry for a while, and then I towel dried the rest of it off so that we don't get the water spots from the last little bit. It looks pretty darn good. Brock's going through and greasing right now, and we're gonna start putting some shields back on. There's a few I can do while he's greasing. That's not gonna be in the way, but some of them will have to wait. Oh yeah, one other thing that I kind of forgot. Um, we need to tighten this chain. This is the clean grain elevator chain. Get all this dirt out of here too, goodness gracious. I'm still finding it. Anyway, uh, this chain here, it's not terribly loose, but it does pull away from that sprocket a little bit. You want it to be able to move side to side, you don't want it to pull away like that. So we've gotta loosen these four bolts and then use this to push that whole thing down. So I got those outside four bolts loosened up, and now we're turning this, and the weight of that is pretty much moving it and tightening that chain up. We'll go until there's, until it's there. So now I can't pull the chain away from there, but we can still sort of slide it. Get the hose. This is the clean grain auger anyway, so that's all attached to this piece that's sliding up and down here. So now we've got it about where we want. We'll push that one up, push this one down, and tighten it into place. And then we tighten these back up. Getting closer. Got the rotor covers in there. Brock getting our grain tank covers put on. I got that shield put on there. I think Brock's done greasing, or Brock thinks he's done greasing. We'll have to see. No, I'm sure it's fine. Um, got some covers put on there. I was kind of waiting on these big ones to, for him to finish, so now we can start putting those on. We're almost done here. It's not the cleanest combine in the world. It's probably not the cleanest we've ever had a combine. 
but it's not bad. I don't know. Should I? Let's see how Brock's doing over here on this side. We got all the shields on over here, though. Got a couple to go. Let's finish these up. Okay. What do you think, Brock? Are we done? Brock knows he has to wash the windows yet, so he's trying to be done. Is it certifiable? Absolutely. Is it, worthy? is it worthy? I think so. Andy, is it worthy of a sticker? I don't know if it is. At least, I hope he doesn't come and look because I'd be embarrassed, but we'll put a sticker on. Certified, Andy Clean. Thanks to thanks to my buddy Andy. He, uh, if you don't know who he is, go check out Andy Clean on Instagram. He has the Andy Clean soap and the stickers and cleans his equipment really well. And he sent me some stickers last year, so finally using them. Went through the book there and wrote down everything that we have done to this since we've had it in the shop. Changed the oils and filters and all those kinds of things. Um, made the notes that I needed to make. We're done. I'm calling it. We're done with the combine. So uh, tomorrow we'll get it out of here, put it in the barn in the back in the clean equipment barn, uh, and we'll bring something else in. Probably the 8RX. Uh, it's already been fairly well power washed, not done cleaning it by any means, but we got to bring it through and do all the oil changes and maintenance. And so we'll kind of get the tractors through the shop next here and get all those done. Do the 8RX, the 9R, the 8R, the 8430 eventually. We got to get it back from uh, Berkey, but uh, yeah, this is a big project. This one is always the biggest project of the year. It takes the longest here in the shop. Granted, we could have gotten through it much faster if we we're a little more motivated and needed to be done, but it's December. We're not, and so we take our time and be a little more thorough than maybe we necessary, but do a good job, and it looks good. So, like I said, we'll park in the barn and get it out in the end of June, get the draper head hooked up because we got to go through that yet, and get ready for weed harvest. Good first day back after the long holiday weekend here with Christmas, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> It turned out really well. Anyway, uh, it's a little after 5. I'm going home, so thanks for watching this one. The goal was to get the combine out of here before Christmas. One day late. That's okay. We're, we'll be fine. Um, no big deal. So thanks for watching today. Have a great rest of your night. Um, we'll find something to do tomorrow. Get that out of here and move another tractor in. I don't know how much work we'll do to anything. I should find my coat. I brought one. It's here somewhere. Um... But we will find something to do. I do have some running around that I could do. Usually this week between New Year's and Christmas is a halfway decent time to find some people and go over things that need to be gone over. Seed and other stuff. So we'll see. Maybe do some of that tomorrow. Anyway, have a great night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow probably.